I'm Brantley Milligan. I'm director of operations at ENS. ENS stands for Ethereum Name Service. And I'm going to be talking about how, um, yeah, ENS complements and goes beyond, you know, and expands DNS. Uh, we don't see these systems in competition. Uh, we see them as a, uh, in uh, as, as complementary. Let me get to a better view here. Okay. Uh, so here's just some basic information where I mentioned Brantley Milligan. So I actually work for a nonprofit called True Names Limited, which is a Singaporean nonprofit, which is the de facto manager of ENS. Um, there's some links for us. So I, these are the three things I'm going to talk about. So a, an update on stats. I'm going to talk about namespace, particularly how it relates to DNS and then uses. Um, okay, so ENS has had a lot of growth, uh, particularly in the last year. Um, so, you know, you can see here we have about 300,000 names on there with just over 100,000 users. That's great. We're actually not optimizing for the number of names. Uh, we're not going for the number of names, but we, we're going for the highest number of names used. So we've actually designed our system uh, to discourage like squatting and things like this, which just can inflate name numbers. Um, but we are really big on integrations. So you can see we now have over 250 integrations. Chainlink does great st stuff with, with ENS. And that's really what matters to us. You know, you can have a naming system, but if you can't use it anywhere, that's not really valuable. Um, and we're, we're happy to be in, you know, I think about 50 wallets and a huge number of dApps and even some browsers. Um, so that's been a lot of growth there. Uh, this shows registration. So like I said, we're optimizing not for the number of names. We actually have things in place to try to discourage people just registering names they aren't using. But despite that, and despite the fact that ENS works exclusively on Ethereum uh, layer one with high gas fees, we've had this explosion in registrations recently. You can see that in June was our, our that's the third from the right, was our highest ever. You know, July was also still very high, our second highest ever. Um, so there's despite high gas prices, this huge increase. <clears throat> um, and as a result uh, of the increases in price, now the, 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 um, the project is really well funded. So we're a nonprofit. Uh, most of our money has come from either, has historically come from um, grants, but now, it, in which by the way, Chainlink has given us a grant, uh, but now it also comes from... <clears throat> Uh, .eth name uh, registration fees, which come in Ether. We've been holding in Ether and we got a lot uh, a couple of years ago when the price was lower. And now we've got, you know, we're, we're very well funded, um, which is good because we want public goods to be well funded. Also, by the way, we're still hiring. We're looking for a governance lead and an integration lead, FYI. So we're growing. Okay, so I want to talk about the namespace. So you've probably heard of .eth. So .eth, .eth names like Brantley.eth. That is the native, what's called TLD of ENS. TLD stands for topable domain. It's like a suffix like .com or .org or .net or something like that. .eth exists only on ENS. It's not on DNS, okay? Um, and it has the full security and the full features of being blockchain native. But to expand the namespace, we're also integrating the DNS namespace. So a key concept to have in your mind is a lot of people think ENS is .eth names. That is false. ENS is naming infrastructure that can support any names. And just it has .eth names. And then it also we're also importing in DNS names. So for example, if you own the DNS name Brantley.xyz, as I do, on DNS, you can then import it and use Brantley.xyz on ENS. By the way, not Brantley.eth. These are different names. So if you know, you're, you're getting Brantley.xyz, then Brantley.eth is a separate name on ENS. So currently this works for .xyz names and .art names and a few others, uh, but soon it's gonna work for basically all of DNS. So we're actually about a week and a half away from likely deploying this on mainnet. It's on Ropsten right now, if anybody wants to try it out, like if you have a .com and you would try claiming it, on ENS on Robston, that can be a cool thing. Um, so, so just to make clear what this means is like, you will be able to use like MetaMask to send, you know, ether to Brantley.com, or you could use Trust Wallet to send Dogecoin to Brantley.com and it's using ENS in the background. So I think that's really cool. Yeah, so it's currently on Robston. Also, we just launched a bug bounty, so, if you want to look at this code and if you find a big bug, you can make a lot of money. So I highly recommend looking into that if you're the type of person who does that. 
So this gets into like what, what I was saying at the beginning. So ENS then complements, expands usefulness of DNS. We don't want name collisions with DNS. This is why we're integrating the DNS namespace. We're not just creating tons of other TLDs. Now, .eth, which is not in DNS, is never going to conflict with DNS because it's a reserved name in DNS. I, I don't want to explain that's a bit complicated, but it can never be created. Um, but the DNS namespace, with some exceptions, some reverse reserved names, can expand over time. A lot of people don't realize this. So there is a system in place to create new suffixes on DNS. Um, so just FYI, this is a problem with some other uh, blockchain-based naming projects. That they've just created other TLDs, uh, which are not reserved in DNS. And it's highly likely they will be created in DNS in the future. And because ENS just allows you to import in a name that exists on DNS, it means these projects will uh, conflict with both DNS and ENS. It's a bit of a looming problem. But um, this, that's not our strategy. Our strategy is there's no need to set ourselves up for conflict with the global namespace that everyone's using. Um, we can just simply uh, follow that namespace and bring the benefits of blockchain technology to that. We think this is best for users. You're not gonna have name collisions and confusion. It's also best for the success of the technology that we're not unnecessarily putting up roadblocks uh, for ourselves. Yeah, so just kind of a summary on this point. So ENS uses Ethereum to serve the internet, including and beyond the Ethereum ecosystem. And our goal is to make ENS and therefore Ethereum a basic piece of internet infrastructure used widely by people, whether they are part of the blockchain community or not. You'll see this more when I talk about use cases. And we, we're going to do this by complementing the, we are doing this by complementing the DNS tech stack in parallel, expanding the capabilities of the existing DNS namespace, focusing on use cases not served by DNS. That's another thing too, we're, you know, DNS works really well for certain things that we're not looking to necessarily replace it for that anytime soon. That would not be a, a possible thing to do. But there are types of things that you can do on ENS that you cannot do on DNS. And, um, or, you know, there's better security, for, so it makes sense for, for other types of use cases. We're focused on those. Okay, so let's talk about um, use cases. First thing I want to say is that ENS, uh, is extensible. That means is like it, you can expand it, you can build on it, um, you can store any arbitrary information in ENS. So while there's like certain use cases we're focused on, if you want to use ENS to store something else, you can do that. So you could like store an email address or your mailing address or some other hash or something complete, you know, whatever you want, blockchain or not related, you can use ENS for your naming. So I'm gonna talk about three main use cases. The first main use case that's become really popular with ENS is this idea of it being your Web3 username. So um, the idea is that the Web2 model was that you'd have a different sandboxed username for each, for each like app, right? So whether you're on Instagram or on Gmail or GitHub, you have to like get your own username and maybe, oh, someone else already got my username. It's like a land rush every time, kind of annoying. Um, and you kind of, each account is locked into that sandbox system. The Web3 model is that your Ethereum account is your account that you own, that you use for every DAP. And then your ENS name is your username that you can use for every DAP. So whether I sign into Snapshot or Showtime or Crypto Voxels or a bunch of other ones, it's the same Ethereum account and the same username, my ENS name used for all of them. I think that's really powerful. So here's an example like in our um, ENS manager app. So this is what it looks like. Let's say if you're, log, you're connected without an ENS name set up and this is what it can look like if you do. Uh, so notice I have uh, an avatar also connected to my ENS name. It can display, I can have other profile information. Also notice as Brantley.art, so that's a DNS name that I've imported into ENS I'm using as my Web3 username. So if you like .eth, that's great, but if you don't like it, you can just use a DNS name that you already own. Yeah, so you can have an avatar, social media links, any info you want, and this is used tons of places, just like a brief list, you know, like Uniswap, Showtime, OpenSea, CryptoVoxel, Snapshot, I mean, tons of places have this functionality. Um, a second major use case is crypto payments. So this is actually what most people think of when they, when they think of ENS. They think, oh, it makes it easier to send 
stuff to an Ethereum address. And it does do that, um, but it also does a lot more. So we actually support um, basically all cryptocurrency addresses. So you can store not only an Ethereum address in your ENS records, but also a Bitcoin address, a Dogecoin address, a NIR address, Solana address, et cetera, on down the line. Um, technically, you can store any blockchain address. Um, we store everything in binary on chain to save space. So we have this like address in encoding library. Um, and so in practice, most wallets support what's in our address encoding library. And that supports like, a, I think around 110 the addresses of addresses of about 110 blockchains, but that's like, you know, that's pretty much any asset you would want. Um, let me tell you, if you go down the list and you get out of even the top 20 or after 100, it gets pretty bleak pretty quickly. The different blockchains um, that are there, and we can always add, you know, any blockchain to our address encoding library. You know, feel free to submit a PR if we're missing something. So, you know, what does this look like? Oh, I want to send you know, an NFT to somebody rather than pasting, let's say their Ethereum address, I put in a name and it grabs the Ethereum address for me and it can send that. Uh, the last use case is decentralized websites. So the idea here is that uh, a normal website stack is uh, DNS plus a web server. A decentralized website is using ENS, a decentralized naming system, plus like some sort of distributed uh, file sharing network like uh, IPFS. We also support Swarm and Skynet and even actually Tor.any addresses. Um, and then with in some browsers like MetaMask Mobile, or if you have the MetaMask extension or in Brave or Opera, a bunch of others, you just type in your name and it will resolve it like a normal website. We also have this eth.link thing. It's a gateway service where if you just add .link to the end of the .eth name, it, in any browser, it will display the decentralized website. Great. Uh, so that's the end. I have some links here. Um, Dustin, I think I have a few minutes left. Are there any questions or? Yeah. What What are you, you know, um, most excited about coming into, you know, the end of the year? Well, the CNS namespace integration, which is huge, is coming hopefully in about a week and a half. So like the full CNS namespace integration. We also uh, have a lot of work we're doing on layer two scaling. So uh, we have a demo on our blog, uh, but basically it will allow users to store records and subdomains on any arbitrary, not only layer two of their choice, but any external location of their choice. So that should be great. So I'm excited about that. Awesome. Um, yeah, I'm just seeing if anybody else has any other questions. Um, So one question is, each time we update a value in our ENS, for example, reverse lockup, profile picture, links, it's a separate transaction, right? Question mark. Is there a way to roll up all these values together for the good of the land? Yes. So right now you can set as many ENS records in one transaction as you want already. That's Fantastic. And like I said, soon, hopefully by the end of this year, you'll be able to store all those on the layer two of your choice anyway. So they'll be off layer one. Awesome. Um, Norman asks, how do I get an image on my ENS name? It's an avatar. Uh, you just go to the page for your name and there's a, it's in the text record section. It's listed av as avatar. You just put the URL to an image there and then that shows up some places. Um, we're in the middle of redesigning our manager. So a lot of this will be more clear in the future, but that's what you do. Awesome. Well, we have just uh, 45 seconds left uh, besides um, a couple hiring that you need to do. Where would people need to find that information for them to, you know, possibly get in touch with you for, for work and anything else that you would like to leave on um, with 30 yeah, seconds I'd, remaining. Yeah. I'd say follow us on Twitter. We're ENS domains. Um, we have a blog on Medium where you can find all the latest information. You can subscribe to, we have a Substack newsletter. You can find that also. Uh, but great. Thank you very much. We love Chainlink. Um, Sergey is actually one of our ENS root key holders. So he's uh, involved. And uh, good luck with the rest of the conference. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it, Brantley.